I want to talk about Ukraine, which we do cover pretty regularly here on the platform. And it is now more than a year since Russia invaded. Remember, Russia invaded Ukraine. And many were predicting, oh, it's going to be all over. The Russians will crush Ukraine and take it over. Well, they didn't. They didn't. Ukraine, under uh, President Zelensky, has resisted. And with the assistance of the international community, is still resisting the Russian invasion. And indeed, last year, they made some, they made some gains. But as happens with international events, it's probably not the hot news story it used to be which doesn't mean we shouldn't care and doesn't mean it's not important. One group in New Zealand that's trying to keep the focus is uh, on, on what's happening there is Mahi for Ukraine, and their spokesperson, Kate Terska, joins us on the line now. Kate, nice to talk to you again. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. Thank you, Sean. All right. Over a year now, and there is a still, still a war going on, and people are still dying and people are still afraid for their lives and living in a war zone, aren't they? Absolutely. It's very much going on. Yeah. Uh, Kate, Kate, I know that your group here in New Zealand is particularly focused on, on the situation for people who at present want to get out of uh, Ukraine because it's a dangerous place. Have we made progress in terms of New Zealand's attitude towards war refugees uh, from Ukraine? We have and we haven't. Um, in certain respects, there were recently some changes announced by the government in terms of updates to the um, Ukraine special visa policy. Um, the special visa has been extended, so um, it was due to end in March this year and it's now extended to um next year essentially you can apply for another year but other than that only some of the legal criteria around sponsorship and who can be sponsored have been extended yeah we still have only around 600 people who have arrived on this visa and not much else um that government yeah. is prepared to offer okay so we've got 600 war refugees from ukraine here here now and i know there was a problem with coming out without dependents or husbands, has that problem been dealt with? The husbands um, no longer still can't uh, come to New Zealand, obviously, because they can't leave Ukraine unless they have some special uh, circumstances that allow them to leave. Yeah. So, by and large, we have children, uh, females and elderly coming yeah. uh, to New Zealand. Yeah. Kate, another problem, of course, is that there is no Ukrainian uh, diplomatic post in New Zealand. It's all done out of Canberra, isn't it? Yes, that's right. We do have an ambassador, um, but he's not non-resident. He lives. Uh, yeah, in I've Australia actually got a friend, system. believe it or not, who wants to bring uh, a friend from from Ukraine uh, into the country, and he's having real problems. I think getting here, and it's just a visitor's visa he wants for here, and he's having, I, I think, some bureaucratic issues, um, which I need to help them out on, actually, because I said I would. Meantime, you have, to kind of, I guess, refocus this, published an online book. Tell us about that. Uh, this was a really uh, fun and sort of great heartwarming project. Uh, from the beginning of the war, when the full-scale invasion started, we started receiving a lot of messages and a lot of support from New Zealand public, and that's when the idea was born. We thought uh, when the visa was announced, so we obviously worked with the government to establish this special Ukraine policy, and when it was announced, we thought, it wouldn't it be great to welcome these um, Ukrainians into New Zealand and have New Zealand kids to write some messages and draw some pictures um, of welcome and aroha. So we put out a message and we asked the schools and children all around New Zealand to support this initiative and we called it Aroha for Ukraine. And we've literally received thousands of messages, drawings, pictures, letters, all sorts of things. And it was just overwhelming response, which we're immensely grateful for. And from that, uh, we engaged um, a children's book writer who helped us putting this into a book. Obviously, we couldn't use all of the messages because there were so many. Um, there was a small group of us that divided hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these between us and went through them and picked a few that we thought. I mean, and obviously, 
you can't judge which ones better. They were all great, but we just picked a few that we uh, really enjoyed personally and uh, put them into a book. So now it is an e-book, right. which we're hoping to print as well. Okay. Kate, um, how are the 600 people, uh, women and children who are here as, as war refugees, how are they doing? How are they fitting in and how are they enjoying themselves? Um, well, I guess there are varied stories around how people are settling and how they're dealing. I think there are many people who are um, doing pretty well and trying to assimilate. Some have found jobs even. But of course, there are many who are still struggling. And um, the main thing that many people are struggling with is uncertainty at the moment. As you know, this is just a temporary visa, which allows them to stay in New Zealand for two years. And currently, there's no mechanism to extend the stay. And there's also no pathway to settle in New Zealand or apply for residency, etc. in majority of cases, because the existing pathways are not necessarily suitable for these people due to varied reasons. Yeah. So people are sitting um, here unsure what will happen to them, anxious, stressed, not knowing whether or not they will be kicked out, worrying about their future, unable to plan. And this is the piece that we're hoping to work with the government on next, and we really, really, really urge the government to act on it as soon as possible and put some clarity around this and provide some certainty to these people. Yep, I hear, uh, Kate. And now, Kate, I guess we hope that in a year, either militarily or diplomatically, um, and I would say uh, openly in favour of, of Ukraine, that the war is over, though, Geez, you, you just hope there's an end in sight. Absolutely, but even so, this will be the country that will be dealing with the aftermath of the war. A lot of the infrastructure has been destroyed. I think it's believed that it will take many, many years to even demine all of the territory of Ukraine. There are many cities, especially in the south and the east, that are half ruined and, and they're just not livable. And like I said, a lot of these people that we have here are elderly who can't be expected to relocate again back into the country that's dealing with this aftermath. Some people have no home to return to, no family to return to, no jobs to return to. And really just, it's, it's a hard thing to even com comprehend. So even if the war was to end within this next year, there is still not necessarily a chance. Yes, some people may like to go back, but they would need some time to do so safely yeah. and, you know, ensure that they have a life that they can settle in. But others may just not have that option yeah. and I... potentially would want to stay in New Zealand. So this is something to consider as well. Yeah, I hear you, Kate. Uh, Kate, you've still got family and connections in Ukraine, obviously. Yes, I do. How are they doing? Um... Well, again, different stories. I have quite a lot of friends who are currently fighting for Ukraine. I also have family who are, some are in Ukraine, others are in Europe, and they've just been divided and separated all over. I have uh, a cousin whose fiancé got killed in action recently, mm -hmm. and she's only 21, and she was spending her life with him. And that's pretty hard and heartbreaking to watch. There are various stories, but by and large, people back in Ukraine, and my family and friends included, they all believe in Ukraine's victory, and they're all working toward that. Kate, uh, you're doing your bit here too, clearly as well, and I thank you very much indeed for joining us again, and, and good luck with it all. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Jeez. Kate Tesca, um, spokesperson for Mahi for Ukraine.